Hello internet friends and yet here. Why is it taking me so long to get around to Hot Rod in the Studio Series 86? Because he's a little bit rare now in the UK. He was one of the first ones to be released and like Grimlock, he's getting hard to get hold of. Being sort of the protagonist, the lead character of the movie, that's how I've always thought of Hot Rod. He is one that is going to be in demand. So I didn't realize that Hot Rod the arrival of this fiery hothead would mean the kind of decline of those characters that I'd grown to love in the original G1 cartoon. Everybody died. Brawn, Ratchet, Ironhide, many, many more, all biting the dust so that this guy could step into the spotlight along with Blur and Cup. As far as I've seen, this, this might be one of the best versions of him, but that is the point of this video. We're gonna take him out and have a look. As always, I'll just check what's on the back of this guy. He's 29 step transformation. He's a Voyager class and Voyager is mainly uh, for slightly larger guys. In terms of how big Hot Rod is, he is deluxe sort of size same size as blur and cut but they released him as a voyager because he has all these parts he's got the matrix he's got some blast effects and things we'll play around with them looks like as they've been doing all the way through you can clip the guns onto the car that's something i never bother doing really but he also has his chopper from the from the film as well and a gun because in the movie i don't think he uses a gun right he just uses his pipes his exhaust pipes turn into his guns and I always thought that was a very cool part of Hot Rod, so... Anyway, let's get this guy opened up and take a look at him. I always loved Hot Rod in the movie and always felt it was a little bit of a shame that he so quickly turned into Rodimus Prime. I thought he was a much more intriguing character as the kind of the hothead, the, the guy who's trying to prove himself, but as we know, he kind of, that role was almost taken up by Bumblebee in later uh, versions of Transformers and Hot Rod kind of fell by the wayside. Okay, first impressions for me are really rather good. I do like the, uh, the proportions out of the box. I think, uh, well, weird thing to say, even better than in the box. You can't always tell sometimes when they're in the box exactly how they're going to feel and obviously moving, moving them 360 all the way around. I mean, this looks, this is a really good rendition of Hot Rod, right? Let's see about articulation and things. He's got a swivel with the head. I really find that important these days so we can get some dynamic poses going on and have a look around. There's a, the, the eyebrows, I don't know if you can see that, they're a little bit darker than the back of the head. There's some kind of shading on the top of the, on his helmet to give it a little bit of definition. And I just really like the way his eyes look there. They, they pop in a way that, well, particularly the early cup in this range didn't they sorted it out later but elbow swivel to their arm swivel as well and this is a really cool thing because we're going to be able to get him to hold the matrix so it's not each individual finger but he does have a, a gripping motion that's the that's the first one of the studio series that i've bought uh, i think this is the first voyager that i've opened and um i think it's expected that they have a little bit more articulation and that's an example of that but also yeah the arms seem nice well that's a little bit weird but in certain <laughs> when you're taking photographs and doing screenshots of thumbnails like i do uh, sometimes that's really really handy to be able to move him in a weird way because when you do that you don't really notice right and it looks like he's charging even though there the arm looks a bit weird. So yeah, that all got, stuff like that is very cool. Let's have a look at the, uh, have a look at the legs. Forward, sideways, swivel there, there. We can't bend at the knee sideways. Doesn't look like. Wrist, wrist swivel's pretty good all the way around. Gonna be transforming. A little bit of an ankle swivel without the transformation it seems like and that figure looks good i'm so glad i've got hot rod at this stage 
I think the first thing I want to try and do is fit the matrix together. I looked at the instructions. This is like the flash from the matrix when it's when he's opening it. Let's try and do it exactly as the instructions say first, first time round. Which I think is that way. And then we do that. Get this all correct. And then I guess the thumb goes through the thing there. Cool, so there he is against the background opening the matrix. I'm glad they've changed this background and given it something specific to the character. Seems to be something that they stopped doing a little bit later. Generic Autobot City background seems to prevail. But yeah, it looks cool. I thought this was gonna be a gimmick, but I really like the fact that he does have the matrix. Of course, he doesn't have anywhere to put it, but that's okay. So yeah, he doesn't really, he doesn't use guns in the movie, does he? So. I mean, he looks good with them. Dual blasters. What did the original G1 thing come with? Actually, it looks really good. He looks a little bit like a gunslinger, you know? Like quick on the draw. And his pipes, I'm a little bit disappointed that they're not longer. Don't they, aren't these pipes longer in the movies? Maybe there'll be something in the transformation that makes them longer. This is something that I don't particularly take very much interest in, the blast effects and stuff. I've never liked them in any particular toy line. I, I, I know what they're trying to do, but I mean, look, it's all bent out of shape. So that's a, that's a thing, because it's very flimsy plastic. So things get bent out of shape. And it always just looks to me like translucent plastic, you know, rather than blast effects and stuff. So I'm not too bothered with that stuff. And let's see how this works. I don't really know how this is going to work. Do we fold his, I imagine, it's on his left arm. I trust you Hasbro, I know what you, you know what you're doing, I don't. It's good, it's good. I think we're going to get some cool poses with this guy. I was going to say check out this gimmick, but I don't think it is a gimmick. This is just attention to detail, I love it. So you flip up his head and his visor comes down. I think he only uses it once a, once in the movie, but that is very cool. You know, it's not really needed. I'm, t I'm sort of getting a sense of the sort of thing that you can expect from the Voyager class. You know, even if they're the same size, this guy seems a lot more intricate. The moving hands, the visor, all the accessories, when he was like 35 pounds, I was like, well, he's the same size as Cook, right? There's not that much difference. But this this figure is a lot more intricate, it seems to me. Anyway, I've transformed him a couple of times, uh, so I'm a little bit familiar with it. Let's have a go and see if I can do it for the camera. I've... Uh, I've got a little bit better at kind of doing this. I've realized now how foolish it was to think that you're going to be able to transform some of these guys the way you transformed, the way I certainly transformed the G1 back in the day, because they're just, the fact is they're just a lot more intricate. Um, they're harder to, they're harder to do. So, you really just have to do it a couple of times. Luckily, there's some plenty of YouTubers. If the uh, instructions don't always make it clear what you're doing. So a lot of folding of legs with this guy. Things fold out, things fold in. It's very nice. Those out of the side like that. And the car mode, I'll see what you guys think. I think, whereas the robot mode, I really like. We go on that clip, there's a little clip. There's the first clip is not right. So clip, and then it springs out and then clip again. Uh, but you're not seeing here, yeah, obviously. I haven't done that yet. There we go. I don't know what I was talking about with the clip there. There is a there is a stage here where uh, they need to clip in more. 
more securely, let's say. All right, line everything up nicely. A little bit of springiness. Okay, and the next stage, I guess we can bring his hood down. There we go. I like it when everything just slots. But when a plan comes together, that's just a little bit out of alignment there, isn't it? There you go, there's the clip. Oh, let's line everything up. And then the final stage, just these arms here, I couldn't tell from the instructions. I do seem to have some problems with the instructions interpreting exactly what they're telling me to do sometimes. Uh, maybe it's just my lack of experience with transformers in general, but I found that this transformation doesn't work unless you do that with the hands. Uh, and then when you fold it over, the hands sort of are out of the way. So all this stuff down the side, there's room for it to kind of all fit together. But I, I kind of couldn't, I couldn't see that in the instructions. Ah. Let's move his arms again. I really feel like those are, those fingers need to be out, but they're being pushed back in by the. Uh, I mean, it might not even be necessary, but there we go. Hood in place. Then the final stage is just that you know, and if those hands are not down, it seems like the the pipes and these side bits don't really slot together properly. There we go. Slotted. And this side as well. There we go. Nice, right? Not too bad. A little bit of a gap there on the fender you can nudge things around a little bit shift them back together sometimes if things are not lined up this kind of pops out so you can kind of wedge it in a little bit and there's the car mode i mean it is it's it's accurate it's accurate it just feels it's a very sleek design in the movie isn't it like there so push it, push it into alignment a little bit better. Um, but then the, sometimes the hood goes funny. I think that's correct. We'll see. You'll tell, you guys will tell me in the comments if I missed anything. It looks good. It looks good. I can't complain, but I just feel like it's a bit flat. But that probably is how it is in the movie. I'll just transform him back. We'll do some scale comparisons. We've already had a look at Cup. Of course, the one that we want to have a look at is RC because they did hint a little bit of a romantic relationship in the movie between those those two characters and then completely neglected to take it anywhere. You know, until I got into getting these G1 themed, retro themed modern Transformers, I had forgotten the how satisfying it is to just sit and transform transformers um, because the G1 ones that I was getting were all in the, in the package and you don't, I'd completely forgotten how therapeutic it is so sometimes I just sit and watch TV and transform things. So as you can see I don't want to obsess about scale but I'll put a link up here to where I'm coming from with this scale issue. Um, RC is very small uh, on some of the concept drawings, but in the movie, I think she's almost as tall as Hot Rod. So I think they've found a kind of middle ground here where she doesn't look tiny, but let me take the camera off so you can see straight on. She's not too small. I think it would be silly if she was any smaller than that. She would look like a mini bot. And she's obviously taller than someone like Bumblebee. But don't they look good all together? So yeah, my verdict on Hot Rod 
as I always say when I get one of these new figures, the novelty is still there. But I'm trying to think objectively. The novelty is there, so I tend to like them the best, is what I was going to say. But I think, actually, that is a really good rendition of Hot Rod. He seems to be a hard character to get correct. Um, and I think this is a good rendition. Don't particularly like the uh, length of those pipes there, but when they, I can see why they've done it. Um, so that they connect together nicely in car mode. And car mode seems weird to me in Hot Rod. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed watching this unboxing and review of Hot Rod. And stick around for the next one. Like and sub and all that crap. I'll see you next time. Bye.